my loyal subjects, and welcome! Today we are going to be talking about how to use the Bridge Edge Loops tool in Blender. It is a lovely, lovely tool. Not quite as good as the Bevel tool in my opinion, but it is still quite awesome. It's a tool that basically will take any loop of vertices you've got and bridge them with another one, as you would expect. I can just hit uh, basically, you can go in and type in bridge edge loops and find the tool. You can see various settings. Open loop will basically create a loop with open ends. You can do a closed loop and it will attempt to... It'll generally attempt to loop them back on each other if it is possible. This would show better if I actually had like a more visible loop of points. So for example here, because I've got it set to closed loop, it's going to try to make one. If I choose open loop on the other hand, it'll leave one of the segments open. I can also do loop pairs, and it will attempt to select in basically a pair of loops. Now in this case, we can't do this because we do not have an even number of loops selected, but if we do, you can see what that does. It kind of grabs them in sets of pairs, and, you know, sets of two rather. So this is where we can start to kind of get our ground on what a, you know, what an edge loops operation does. So for one, you can, of course, merge vertices that come up. That's a thing where, you know, it's just a basic merge to deal with overlapping or simultaneous vertices. Twist, which will do exactly what you think it does. It will twist what vertice connects to what edge. So as it'll connect this edge to some sort of rotated or twisted one over on this side, whereas over here it's trying to match it one to one. Now it doesn't do a perfect job, but it does try its best. You can also add a number of cuts. This will add a certain amount of intermediate loops. Now there's an important note in here with these number of cuts, which is how they're actually blended. In this case, it's trying to almost extrude them along in a path, a smooth path, which you can adjust by smoothness. Far from perfect, but works in many cases. You can also do blended surface. Blended surface is a little bit different. It actually attempts to smooth out the surface without necessarily maintaining the loop. You can see in here it collapsed in on itself because it folded that way. This is good for things like cloth or otherwise flowing surfaces. Useful when modeling things like uh, cloth tubes and things like that. Just minor stuff that's not really going to be... doesn't need to be all that detailed but still needs to sort of have that fluid shape. And of course a lot of glass work. So, let's see. See how many vertices we can get away with. Twelve, maybe. So anyway, you can adjust your smoothness to how much it's trying to smooth, and you finally have, of course, linear, which is just a straight line. Mostly for technical stuff. So, in this case, I'm going to choose blended surface because it looks the nicest. We also have profile factor. This will basically bend it in or out based on a certain profile shape that you select here. A lot like proportional editing, this is sort of the shape of the bridge. More useful when you're doing a single bridge, you can also select things like inverse square, which creates this sort of sharp angular effect, which I actually really do like. You know, I kind of find that to be rather charming because it's, I don't know, it's weird and whovillish and kind of creates some nice ornate details, very small, like, uh, very small ornate details. I can imagine this being like a hook on a wall or something like that. Or some, you know, you can see maybe um, making a wall pattern or something like that. Useful for glass uh, handles. Adjust your profile factor by either pushing out or pulling in. You can play around with all kinds of different shapes. From sphere, inverse square is my personal favorite because it's like the smoothest, most elegant, but you've also got smooth, which is your standard smooth and so on. You can just scrub through them, see what you like. But this is where we can kind of get into the more creative uses. Because while it's useful in traditional modeling for the kind of basic uses, for example, if I had a cylinder and I wanted to model some binoculars, I could just go in here, be like, okay, well, you know, I'm going to make, eh, let's delete one of these. Let's have our binoculars here, and we're going to select our vertices that we would like to bridge 
and then we can just hit W and E. And this is the shortcut for it, is you hit W to bring up the specials menu, and you then go under Bridge Edge Loops, which is an option partway down the list. However, it has a shortcut key attached to it. Like almost every menu option in Blender, it's underscored. You can see Bridge Edge Loops, and the E in Bridge Edge Loops is underscored. So we go W, E, which are right next to each other. So you just go W, E, and there's your bridge. Useful for standard modeling tasks. We can even add like a little bit of, you know, maybe a little bit of cuts in there. Adds like a little bit of smoothness to it. And then we can go in here and add, maybe add a little bit of profile. So we can add like uh, maybe inverse square profile. Kind of bring that in. You can see right there, it creates a kind of a cool effect. I like that. Check that. Okay. So. You can see it's a good standard modeling tool, but it's also a good tool just for creating some really cool shapes that you can use in your scenes. The sort of shape finding and art generation. You know, this is all about using this as a powerful tool. So let's say I've created a cool profile or something, and uh, I don't know, I'm sort of playing with this at the moment. But uh, so let's say I've created myself a cool profile that I kind of want to use. And I'm like, okay, well, I would like to make a vase out of this. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to duplicate it upward, and I'm going to scale it down, and I'm going to make sort of this outline of a vase. And yes, you can chain multiple of them together, as I've shown previously. So I'm going to rotate them all a little bit, because I like this sort of twisting, weaving style. In this case, I've got it on, uh, I'm going to switch it over to blended surface, because this works very, very well on vase-like objects. If you do blended path, it has a tendency to do this very straight edge thing when you're just extruding a straight line. It expects you to be kind of doing, uh, be doing a curved path. That's more for pipes. Surface is very good for things like vases. So you can see here, we've created ourselves a weird looking vase. I'm going to scale this down a bit. Now sadly, it doesn't remember the amount of cuts that you've done in the past but that doesn't mean that you can't enjoy yourself with some of the shape and cut related various intricacies. So you can create kind of a very interesting shape out of this. You can even add a little bit of twist if you want, which will twist vertices around. As you can see, it'll basically say, you know, vertice A over here connects to vertice B, and we can basically rotate what vertice B is. You know, it'll sort of spin what it's connected to attempting to twist as it connects. In this case, we've got enough twist just from the rotation of the different pieces that I don't feel the need to actually twist the lines. I don't know, maybe a little bit. It does have some areas where it looks really, really nice. That looks super nice. I like that. It's fluid as hell. So, let's see. As you can see, on some of these shapes, especially with blended surface, surface can kind of collapse on itself. So we can run into stuff like this. Okay. That's good enough. Okay. There we are. And as you can see, we've created ourselves a lovely little shape. We can obviously add a little bit of our profile factor. I love myself some inverse square. And, uh, ooh, look at that. Does that not look cool? Okay. Let's see. You can just duplicate. Maybe push it inward a little bit. Maybe. Maybe push it outward a little bit. Maybe just solidify. Solidify modifier. Maybe. Or, we can be even clever and actually go in, grab each one of our key loops, the kind of sharp points in here, duplicate them, and scale them inward. And then bring them up a little bit. Just a little bit. And I think it was 12 cuts. Yep. There it is. There we are. And again, there's all kinds of cool uses for this and kind of cool stuff you can make. You can use it for standard modeling, though always remember to tweak your settings as needed for the occasion. You can combine it with other tools like bevel to create nice smooth bevels. 
assuming it is not horribly, horribly overlapping. Either way, you get some really neat stuff. And it's just a general powerful tool for content creation. Let's see. Bring that up a little bit. Okay, there we are. But you can see here, you just have a lot of possibilities in terms of what you can create on a whim, and moreover, shape finding. Like, this will actually generate you shapes you can use, which is quite useful. So once you've got yourself something you're happy with, a little bit of subdivision surface will carry you far, in this case. You can just start playing with your shapes and adding them to a lovely little library. So, now I've got this, I'm going to stick this over here, I don't know, maybe smooth it, and then do some auto-smoothing, 35 or something like that. So you can see here, we've created ourselves some lovely shapes. We can also create things that are a little bit more, a little bit less organic and crazy. We can do very basic um, things like creating... I'm going to create a scotch glass real quick, just to kind of demo what this thing can do. So I'm going to do a six-sided scotch glass. If you're not familiar with what a scotch glass looks like, uh, well, you have Google Images. You're probably already familiar. You probably already paused the video and looked. And if not, observe. So I created a loop with 24 vertices. Created one with six at the bottom. This way, when I, they have uh, roughly, they will end up being the same amount of vertices. I'm going to subdivide the six-sided one, so it's now 12 vertices. And now I want to have it still maintain that shape, so I'm going to add some supporting vertices around the edge. So, bevel that, bring the profile up so we're not actually adjusting the shape. And now it is a lovely 24 vertice loop, but just with some the vertices in weird positions. I can bridge the edge loops, and you can see it's got us a, uh, got us a lovely little shape. I can sort of bring this in, and if I just add subdivision surface, you can really see the effect in action, where we've got the kind of sharp polygons on the bottom, and the smooth ring around the top. Really not that hard to make, especially with this tool. So, you know, basic, kind of bring it in, loop that, bring it in, raise this up because I want the bottom of it to be rather thick, and it's like, bridge that loop. You can see it's just a relatively fluid tool to use once you start getting the hang of using it. Sort of like the inset tool, which you should also check out. It's an add-on, actually, but you should still check it out. So, you can see here we can create some rather powerful artwork relatively easily. Some nice content to fill our scenes with. There we are. There's our lovely scotch glass. And for the sake of our big final finale, and having covered how awesome this tool is, let's just go ahead and throw together a very simple and relatively ramshackle glass demo. There we are. So hopefully you found this video interesting. And hopefully you'll be thinking of your own uses for the ever-so-lovely Bridge Edge Loops tool. And who knows? Maybe you'll make some even more awesome stuff. I've made metalwork with it and all kinds of other stuff. But it's just a powerful tool that you can use to create some very interesting shapes. And also is just generally a good modeling tool to kind of keep in the back of your arsenal. So without further ado, peace out. Thuluf Tachen. Goodbye.